Hello everyone, and what are we doing? Well, we're cleaning the carbon off the top of a 390 XP piston. We do work up here to kind of a mild polish on it, but this video, I just wanted to try something different. Seen all my videos are kind of looking the same, so thought I'd do something different, but Right now I've got not really what you'd call a coarse cartridge roll, but maybe like a worn out coarse cartridge roll, and we are getting all the carbon off the top of the piston. I myself personally will not even check any kind of timing number, any kind of squish, unless all of the carbon's been removed from the squish band from the crown of the piston. That's just me to each their own. They can do what they want to do, but that's just the way I do it. But yeah, we do work up here in grits, finer and finer, um, to a piece of scotch bright. It ain't ain't a mirror finish on it, but it's good enough. Carbon will be less likely pile up and stick on it in the future. At the end of the day, it all has a lot to do with your oil mix you're running and how rich the saws are running. But in most cases, polishing does kind of prevent that. And here we are doing basically the same thing to the combustion chamber itself. And guys, you have to forgive me, I did not video any machine work at all when I start a video out that way. It just seems a lot of my following will click right off of it. Don't know the culprit behind that, but it is the case. And boy, look at that pretty squish band. This is after the machine work. You either like it or you don't. They do run better with the machine work, I'll argue it with anyone. And we're checking the squish. Got her dialed right in exactly where I wanted it. And of course we're mapping the saw out with the degree finder and the feeler gauge. Just the way I like to check all my port timing. You guys that follow the channel know that. If you're new, I welcome you and welcome you to check out some of my other videos. I've got a little different way that I like to do things and it's really consistent and it works great for me. And in this particular case, we did lower the exhaust roof a few degrees, meaning a higher numerical number than where it would have originally been. And we are at the exhaust port, starting out with a pretty coarse cartridge roll. I think this thing's like a 60 grit. And if you've never used rolls, and I mean really good high quality rolls, some may refer to them as a sandpaper roll. They remove a lot of material really quickly if it's a coarse roll. Uh, now have you, you can do both intake and exhaust port completely with good cartridge rolls if you have multiple sizes, multiple grits. And in some cases, like on this one you'll see at the end, you can do the transfers themselves. Now the uppers, you're going to have to do something different. but. In most cases, you'll see people start off with a carbide cut or a single cut or double cut. Um, in this case, I didn't need to remove a lot of material, so I chose the really coarse grit roll, and we worked up. You'll see shortly to a piece of scotch bright and some polishing compound. Um, I'd like to also add, when I do these videos like this, this is not the whole process, I'm just showing you kind of a ballpark of what is generally going on. Um, like this was all filmed over the course of close to a week. I took the saw apart one evening, um, came in the next evening, done the machine work, dialed in the squish. The following evening I did do the exhaust port and the intake port in the same evening. The next evening was spent grinding the upper transfers, dialing them in, 
and kind of finishing up the cylinder and getting it cleaned up. And then the following evening, I put the saw back together, and today I put it in a piece of wood and put a little bit of time on it and got it dialed in. Um, by the time you guys see this, it will be on its way back to its original owner. I know, I know, there's a lot of guys that don't work up and polish the exhaust port, and I keep showing here what the port looks like after each grit. Um, I know there's some guys that just leave a mill finish on it, like whatever they do with that carbide cutter, they leave. And that is just fine, but have you I've gotten saws back in here from guys that I build for and after two three years of use my exhaust ports still have a polish on them and very little to no carbon build up and these are logging saws and tree service saws firewood saws uh, saws that have had heavy use on them you can just take that for what it's worth I guess but I do polish the exhaust ports. Um, I think it's worth maybe 1% airflow gain over an unpolished port, so probably not really much of any of a performance gain. Uh, it's mainly just, I like to do it, I like the way it looks. Um, <laughs> it's just me. Um, again, it's one of those deals to each their own, and I showed that Meguiar's Ultra Compound. Uh, you can pick that up about anywhere it's really inexpensive it's a polishing compound you buff out your automobile with does a really fine job here sometimes I'll use like work up like a 2000 3000 grit sandpaper with just like WD-40 or you can even use water if you're using wet or dry paper it really doesn't matter but scotch bright and this polishing compound it, it really, really, really lays a good polish on things. Um, again, it's just personal preference whether you do it or not. It does add a little more time to the procedure, but I don't know. I just do it. It's just me. Whether you do it, it's up to you or not. But if it's 1%, that's a 1% gain you didn't have. And there you have it. Camera's not doing it justice. It, it is really, really like a mirror. And about every saw that I do for somebody, that's about what you're going to get. Some of my own saws, I don't work up that fine, especially if it's something I'm playing with. Or no, I'm never really going to use much. And here, showing that coarse roll. We're going to go in and use that to lower the intake floor, which really I was, all I was shooting for was a couple of degrees because after the machine work, it was really dang close. Um, again, back to that exhaust roof, I didn't raise it a bit. It was set right where I wanted it to be after the machining. Um, you got to kind of, if you're, going for one spot with these rolls you'll see I kind of use a circular motion in and out I wish there was a way I could get in on a video and actually show what's going on but um, we'll work on that maybe in the future but um, I'm working that floor normally I'll go with a big wide flat floor but on this I chose to stick with the stock shape on the sides of the port and on the floor, um, like I said, it was really, really close to where I wanted it anyway. And there was like a lip where the plating overhangs. And if you ported a husky cylinder, you know that plating's thick. And you kind of want to take your time with it. But here I'm kind of showing how I shape the roof of these ports. Um, I'll show the end of it here in a little bit, but uh, back to taking my time on things. Um, this is not all I do, it's just a little small portion of the work that I do with the tooling. Um, again, just trying to put a video 
together to kind of show you guys what's going on in general but back to the rolls if you've not used them they're probably not for everybody they're not the cheapest thing in the world to buy the set that i used to buy kind of tripled in price so now i've got to where i'll buy just one particular size and grit in bulk um, when i run out i order more but trying to give a good look at what's going on there some people call that a lung or kidney bean really really mild the way i do it on my cylinders and um, i think it aids in getting our flow down the end of the crankcase where it's supposed to be who knows it may not do a thing um, but there you can kind of get a look at that shape there i'm trying to get up as close as i can and that camera's good enough to even picking up that rough texture um, it's like a cat's tongue, I guess you could call it. 60 grit. And the upper transfers. I spent probably more time here than I did anywhere on the whole chainsaw, honestly. Um, I'll start off with like a flat diamond abrasive and a straight hand piece and go in and start working toward um, where I want the timing and then clean things up with the right angle and shape everything but in this case I cut a piece of card stock to grind down to to get everything um, as close to opening at the same time as possible uh, on these I'll set all four uppers to fire at the same time primarily but again spent a lot of time on the upper transfers um, if you only gave me one port, I could pour it on on a cylinder, and that was it, was all I would be allowed to do. I would pull it apart and grind on the uppers. Um, I think they do more for torque and RPM than about any of the ports in there. And there'll be people argue that. But I don't really care, it's just my opinion. And here we're breaking that edge or beveling. Um, I didn't show it and I don't know why, but normally I'll take a worn out cartridge roll and straight hand piece and go in and work around the edges of every port in the saw before I do that. But, um, yeah, and about all I've done to the lowers, I think this is a 120 or 220 grit. It ain't real rough, it ain't real fine. Little tiny roll. Um, went in and basically just broke the edge around the lowers or the transfers themselves and went in and cleaned them up and put that texture on them um, these things are so big you really wouldn't have to do anything 390 has some pretty good sized transfer ports but it's like an 87 cc saw it should have um, and honestly it's about all i've done with them Gotta hog out them lowers, guys. <laughs> I really shouldn't say that stuff. Um, how somebody wants to pour it and what they do is none of my business. And here's the end result, guys. After cleaning it up, um, I think it all turned out really good. Um, this all kind of speaks for itself in the wood. Runs real good. And there's the muffler deflector. I just kind of spot welded it in. Muffler was pretty rusty. Give it a fresh coat of paint. I'll touch and let you guys watch the test cuts. As always, thank y'all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Everybody have a great day.